environmental destruction, incurable disease, and science gone too far. These are usually the plot points of post-apocalyptic stories about the downfall of humanity. They're also the subject of a nearly 300-page scientific report published in December 2024 by a group of scientists who are terrified by an emerging area of research that could destroy life as we know it. These scientists include not only experts from immunology, ecology, and evolutionary biology, but experts from the planetary sciences, biosecurity, and policymaking as well. The report, titled Technical Report on Mirror Bacteria, Feasibility and Risks, addresses the science of mirror life, a kind of lab-made bacteria that is exactly like organic life, apart from a few key differences that make it able to slide past our immune systems and compete in the natural world without any predators. There are some good reasons to study components of mirror life, like designing pharmaceuticals that have fewer negative side effects as a result of having fewer biological interactions with the human body. But this new report warns that developing true mirror bacteria could quickly become a force that scientists can't contain. In nearly 300 pages, scientists lay out how mirror bacteria could be created and how it might decimate life, including what they call a lethal systemic blood infection in humans. So let's take a look at this report together so we can better understand what to expect for mirror invaders and hopefully even prevent our demise. First of all, what even is mirror life? The name sounds like an alien invader from Star Trek, but it actually refers to a kind of intrinsic symmetry in nature that trickles down to biology itself. This is called chirality or handedness, and it shows up almost everywhere in nature, although notably not in some subatomic interactions, which is a topic I covered in my last video about Madame Wu's experiments. In an unmirrored organism, like me or you, I hope, DNA and RNA are exclusively right-handed, while amino acids are exclusively left-handed. Because all components of life are composed this way, they can all interact with each other accordingly, like Tetris pieces fitting just so. In Latin, this left and right-handedness is referred to as levis, L, and dexter, D. The idea of mirror life asks what would happen if this chirality was reversed, and amino acids become right-handed, and RNA-DNA left-handed. So far, scientists have developed mirrored versions of DNA and RNA using special enzymes, and they determined that they act exactly like their unmirrored counterparts, apart from one crucial difference. Like how a right hand can't fit into a left-handed glove, scientists discovered that these nucleic acid mirror molecules can't link up with unmirrored molecules. It's like these molecules are ghosts, they can move through our world without being impacted by it. Scientists say that mirror life created from these mirror components is still 10 to 30 years away, but they're already growing concerned about the power this mirror life could hold. In the second chapter of the report, titled Pathways to Mirror Life, the scientists explore how these mirror organisms, such as mirror bacteria, could one day be made. Once it is possible to create life from scratch in a lab, which the scientists say could be possible in the next decade, there's little to stop this approach working for mirror cells as well. Once methods of creating natural chirality cells have been established, a similar approach could be used to create mirror cells from mirror components. A small group of researchers and funders have begun to explicitly work toward the creation of mirror life with a focus on a bottom-up approach, in which a mirror genome, as well as transcription and translation machinery, are used to build other mirror cellular components. Modern methods for protein synthesis are, in principle, sufficient to synthesize most of the mirror proteins that would be needed to construct a mirror cell, though currently at prohibitive costs. A top-down approach could work as well, the scientists say, which would look like a cellular rendition of the ship of Theseus. A naturally chiral bacterium could be converted into a mirror bacterium, 
bit by bit until it is 100% mirror bacteria. Okay, so let's say we now have a mirror bacteria, such as a mirror version of E. coli. If it's kept in the lab and used for basic research and therapeutics, then everything should be fine, right? Biocontainment measures such as making the bacteria reliant on nutrients not found in nature may work for a bit, but these measures could easily be altered on accident or nefariously and lead to mirror bacteria entering the real world. Given the potentially severe consequences of an escape, any biocontainment methods used with mirror bacteria would have to be extremely robust to all possible paths to escape, including failures arising from human error. Most concerningly, even if robust biocontainment were possible, such measures could always be undone by malicious or reckless actors. Given the relative ease with which mirror bacteria could be engineered if created, engineering versions that could not be abused by malicious actors appears to be extraordinarily difficult. Since mirror life cannot interact directly with non-mirrored life, you might think that they would starve and die off if let out into the wild. Unfortunately, the scientists say this likely wouldn't be the case. While mirrored life wouldn't be able to interact with chiral nutrients like amino acids, there are still types of non-chiral nutrients that they could consume for energy, including fatty acids, alcohols, and some sugars. Mirror life may even be able to scavenge chiral amino acids for parts to make use of them. Although amino acids of the wrong chirality cannot be incorporated directly into proteins by the ribosome, they can be degraded to provide energy and useful nutrients. A mirror E. coli could utilize seven of the canonical amino acids to some extent, and the ability to utilize a further eight could quickly arise through mutations. Speaking of mutating, the scientists warn that mirror bacteria could be just as good at it as unmirrored bacteria. In chapter eight, Environmental Survival and Spread, they say that mirror bacteria could mutate quickly, increase its fitness, and diversify into available niches. In other words, a mirror bacteria on the loose would be nearly impossible to stop or contain. What does all of this mean for us and our interactions with mirror bacteria? Well, probably nothing good. Because mirror bacteria would have no natural predators, they would thrive and spread throughout our ecosystems, including plants, animals, and even water sources that we rely on for food. A mirror bacterium capable of infecting multicellular organisms could spread through varied means, predation of infected animals and scavenging of infected corpses, insect bites and similar vectors, consumption of infected plants, and exposure to contaminated soil or water. It is likely that a mirror bacterium capable of infecting many multicellular species would undergo sustained transmission through the environment. Human activity could spread invasive mirror bacteria even faster via airplanes, cargo ships, and road vehicles. This means that a rapidly mutating mirror bacteria could easily find its way into the human body. Once there, its mirror chirality would mean that our immune system would not be able to detect it. This would likely happen because our immune system would not recognize the mirror bacteria as a living organism and thus not a threat. In the human body, the experts predict that these mirror bacteria infections might look something like sepsis, a life-threatening condition where your body harms itself while attempting to fight an infection. To have a hope of fighting these mirror infections, scientists would need to develop mirror antibiotics to fight them. This is possible, the report says, but treating these infections in humans alone while it runs rampant through animals and the environment would be a bit like trying to put out a house fire in the middle of a forest fire. Any way you spin it, mirror life could be catastrophic to life as we know it on Earth. Luckily, we're not yet past the point of no return to halt this science before it becomes uncontrollable. 
Along with their 300-page report, the scientists also published a paper in Science titled Confronting Risks of Mirror Life, which lays out some concrete steps and policy changes we can make now to protect our future. One of the first steps they outline is to halt the development of mirror genomes, which could be used in the future to develop a mirror cell. They also recommend setting up a system of oversight for technology and components that could be used to create mirror life. The scientists also suggest conducting research to better understand and prepare for risks of mirror life, such as interactions between mirror biomolecules and the immune system, and developing detection and biosurveillance methods to protect against the emergence of mirror life. They also rather optimistically urge all of humanity to come together to resist this existential threat. It's worth keeping in mind that mirror proteins on their own can have safe, helpful roles in science. Their opposite chirality slows breakdown, making longer-lasting medicines. But a full mirror organism is another story. To a certain extent, research into biological mirrors may bring many benefits, but that research must stay tightly contained and stop well short of creating self-sustaining life. One of the report's authors, Drew Endy, estimated it would cost about $500 million to build a full mirror cell. That could be close or far away, depending on people's priorities. But from our current standpoint, looking out toward that horizon, we still have a chance of steering the ship in the right direction. And ultimately, that is why the scientists put so much work into this 300-page report. I became interested in mirror life while writing my book, A Guide to Making Friends in the Fourth Dimension, and that's because a rotation through a higher dimension is a way to make a mirror image of something. My book is available for pre-order right now on tibbies.com, and all of the pre-orders will be signed. In fact, I'm signing these pieces of paper right now, which will be inserted into the books during the binding. Thanks for watching this video and thank you to my Patreon supporters. A special shout out to today's Patreon cat of the day, Stash.